Hey guys, welcome back to Rudder Innovation, where today we're going to be swapping out the crankshaft oil seal on this small engine. Here we go. Alright, as you can see, we got an oil leak right here, and so this is what we're going to be working on. First, you'll take your oil pan and just get a place engine on top of your oil pan that way when you undo this plug it's all going to drain right into the pan and now what i'm going to do is remove the bolts on the side we removed all of these bolts now i'm going to try and pull this face of the engine off. I don't know that I'll be able to salvage this gasket around here, but a lot of times it'll stick to one half and then stick to another half or like of the engine. And what will happen is it'll actually tear in two pieces. So if you want to try and keep this gasket, especially if you don't know if you can get it again, um, then just be slow during this process and you can use flathead screwdrivers or uh, even razor blades to make sure that the gasket stays on one side or the other instead of peeling both halves apart. All right. One of the reasons I like removing this is because a lot of times there will be rust like this you'll see on the crankshaft and I don't want there to be any rough surface on my new seal that I'm going to be putting on the crankcase. So I'll go ahead and remove all this extra rust with a little bit of sandpaper. Right, now I have the shaft cleaned up. I'm going to clean up this old gasket because I ordered a new one ahead of time. And so I'll go ahead and use a razor blade just to uh, scrape this off. That way we can get the new gasket on. All right, I got the gasket off of both pieces. They're pretty clean. And so what I'm gonna do is use the compressed air, blow out any of the little fragments, and then we'll put our new seal on. After getting the side of the engine off, you can see that there's an inner portion of the oil seal that goes around the crankshaft and the outer portion, which kind of looks like a black washer here that presses against the crankcase. The two are supposed to be one, but because it was so worn out from my pressure washer pump failing, which is a whole other video that I'll link at the end, it tore my oil seal into two pieces. To remove the outer portion of the seal, I used a small flathead screwdriver to slowly pry it up as shown here, making sure not to scratch the sides of my crankcase. Now, in the event that you don't want to remove the entire crankcase cover, you could just drill two tiny holes in the side of here and put some screws in there and then use some channel locks to pull on the screws to work it out of the side of the crankcase. And I'll go ahead and show you that example now. If the side of the engine's still on, you don't want to drill too deep or put your screws in too deep because you could damage the bearing behind the seal. Once you have your holes drilled and your screws in there, then you can use your pliers to pull on the oil seal and pull back and forth on each screw and work your way out of the crankcase. And then you can tap in your new one around the crankshaft. Because this was so tiny and there's so little to work with here, I decided to take the side off of my engine um, altogether and then remove it that way. This is the original and because it was so worn out, now it's two. So we're gonna take this and we'll put it around there. But before we do that, notice that there is a little spring that goes around the interior of this seal. And what I'll do is put some grease around that to keep that spring seated nice and so it doesn't rust. And I'm also gonna lube up the exterior of this as I slide it into position around the crank. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it like this. And then I'm going to put this bolt and washer underneath on the bottom side come up through here and then i'm going to place a washer that's the diameter or very close to the 
external diameter of the oil seal. I'm gonna put a smaller one on there uh, so that the, the nut actually catches on the washer. And then I'm just gonna thread this tight. And as I tighten this up, it's gonna hold on the bearing side and it's gonna pull that oil seal down in there recess. Now, I must confess, I already screwed up once and I recessed this one too far. Um, so stop and check every now and then to make sure it's not going too far because if you do recess it too far, it will run into the bearing and then your crankshaft uh, will spin, but the bearing will not. And then you can see how that could cause some issues later down the road. So I'm gonna hold it on the bottom. I'm gonna tighten it up top and then we're slowly gonna work this oil seal down in there. And if you haven't already lubricated this with some oil, you wanna go ahead and do that. All right, so we have our oil seal back pressed in here. There's a little gap between the bearing and the oil seal. You can see that the bearing moves freely. Um, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take, lubricate, make sure you put oil on both of these things. I do have my new gasket on here. And I'm simply gonna slide it on. You do not wanna get the oil seal um, messed up on there. You can try spinning it around if you want to try and get it seated correctly. But you don't want the spring coming off the back of the oil seal. I'm gonna use this stay from a dress shirt collar to slip in between the crankshaft and the lip of the oil seal to help get it installed. So using the tip of this and just slowly pushing in the lip of the oil seal to where it goes around the crankshaft worked. Took a little bit of time. I didn't really want to force it and let that spring pop off the back of the oil seal. So now what I'll do is go ahead and get it snugged up with the bolts. We'll tighten them all up and then we'll fill it back up with oil and run it. So we put our 10W30 four cycle engine oil in here. It said that the capacity was 20.3 ounces. We added 20 ounces. And as you can see, <laughs> that was too much. So I'm gonna tilt this over a little bit, let some more drip out of here, and then uh, we'll make sure it's below the top level of the dipstick and then we'll start it up and run it and make sure that it's not gonna leak out of that new oil seal. All right, we have the surface cleaned off really good. Make sure there is no oil residue or anything around the oil seal. That way we're gonna run it for a little bit and then check it and make sure that there's no leaking. After running it for about an hour, I did see a little bit of oil towards the bottom of the seal. The engine's over 20 years old and the manufacturer doesn't supply the OEM seals anymore. So I got the closest thing that I could find, which is probably the reason why there was a slight leak. All in all, less than one drop of oil after an hour of running, considering I didn't have the OEM oil seal, was well worth the repair compared to buying a brand new pressure washer. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, like it. And if you're watching it on a medium, you can subscribe. Feel free to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace and God bless.